No, I did not reverse age 10 years. I shaved. I didn't shave, I just trimmed. We did some three year anniversary activities with the family today and I decided to trim it up. I do that once in a while. I change it up a lot. Long, short, whatever. Keeping it fresh. You certainly did not click on this video to learn about my beard. So, this is what we are doing today. I've had a concept in my mind for quite a while now. A dying bait fish on its side, fluttering around. Slow sink, fluttering down. And then blah, 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 blah. What could be better than that? Probably just a normal crankbait, but come on. Like a joint far back on the tail, fluttering. Like a, a wide, flat-bodied kind of thing. I need to come up with something. I'm going to be doing this in a one day. This will be a good start for something more for the future, I think. Like if I ever one day have baits for sale on a large scale, this needs to be a part of my lineup. It seems like such a good bait in my mind. I need to create it. Let's go. Symmetry. This bait needs symmetry. It's gonna be a flat bait like this in the water, so I think it's gonna have a lip. Just a 45 degree straight down perpendicular lip right here. It's a good start. Nothing fancy. This will just be my proof of concept. 10 11. I have the perfect little piece of poplar right here. Poplar is kind of a lethargic wood when it comes to making lures, like it's not super buoyant, which I think is what I need for this. Wider actions, not faster and tighter, but just wider. Okay, this bait will require a joint. I'm gonna mark that out right now. And partially cut it. I need a lip slot as well. I'm gonna cut it by hand right now. I still have the dots on this dot paper that keeps everything symmetrical. So I'm still able to cut a nice uh, straight lip slot, I think. That'll do. So while it's still blocked out, last thing I'm gonna do is cut the tail slot. So I did 9.8 minus four divided by two in order to get the correct thickness of a tail slot back here cut. Mark that. Sorry, I thought the camera was rolling that whole time I was figuring all that out, but it wasn't. So you got the short and sweet of it. I'm gonna eyeball some marks. Better than not having anything. a really snug fit but this fin is flexible I think that'll be good isn't that looking amazing already I think so I'm gonna get the chamfers all drawn out and get this bait carved to the exact profile that I want and then I'm gonna make the lip okay sometimes there's really nothing else to say I'm still going for very flat I think that'll give it the best chance of having a decent fluttering action. Ooh, I need to make this through wire too. There's not enough meat on the body of this bait to screw anything into. So yeah, it needs to be a through wire on the front piece right here. That's the center line for the front piece. I'm gonna finish cutting this back piece off. It need not be connected any longer. There will be no hooks connected to this back piece. It'll just be a little thing that flaps around. This bait will have one large treble hook off the middle, and that is it. That is all you need. Got my .032 inch diameter stainless steel wire that I am bending. Where do my pliers go every day? Let's make do with these. That's where the hook hanger is gonna come out of this bait. 
Oh no. I dropped the tailpiece into my workbench. I think it was that whole recovery mission. Stick my hand down here, and there's probably a brown recluse in there ready to bite. Ugh. This is dad stuff right here. Don't you guys hate when you have to stick your hand in the horrible nooks and crannies in your house because you gotta fix something and just don't know what's ready to gnaw it off? You know what? One day's failed. Challenge over. I'm kidding. But seriously. Oh. It was right there. Whoops. Anyway, where were we? Putting the wire in the bait. And there we have the through wire harness for this bait. And yes, it sticks out a good distance down there. I want that. I want this treble to be out away from the body, ready to hook stuff. If you have your hook points too close to the body on the lure, you know, that's an impediment. You don't want impediments in your bait. Weight placement is what we need to be thinking of next. This is a big deal. If I put it up in front of the hook hanger, that's gonna immobilize the head a little bit. If I put it right at the hook hanger, that's probably the sweet spot and it's kind of what I'm leaning towards. But if I put it behind the hook hanger, it's gonna immobile. less leverage for the joint to move. But I'm not so much worried about a quick action, so I don't need to put it close to the joint. I just want a dying action. I'm gonna put it right where the hook hanger is. I'm gonna drill that hole right now. Half inch bit. I think this will get this bait to sink slowly with just one half inch hole. Right there. And you guessed it. I don't have my lead pot plugged in. What do you know? Anyway, the wire is gonna go into the bait now, exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna glue it in. It's glued in. And then I'm gonna add the lead right there, and it's gonna encase that wire. And we're gonna have a nice, strong through wire harness in this bait. I need to make that lip. I'll do that while the lead pot is heating up with some Lexan polycarbonate. And wouldn't you know it, I had the perfect lip for the job right here. I didn't even have to cut it. You know, you start getting a bunch of uh, stuff. Well, I, I just have a lot of lips laying around. What, I, I didn't know what I'm trying to say there, but a lot of lips lying around this shop, I tell you what. I don't advise that you hammer lips in to your baits, but it just happens to be what I'm doing right now. I don't know why this lip is so difficult. And I'm not using a hammer. I'm using a spoon. I don't understand. What the heck? And yes, there's a slot cut for the wire. I know. It's not the wire that's in the way. It's just this thing is really hard to get in there. We're going to get it. Well, I have not gotten it yet, but the lead pot's hot, so let's get this poured. We did it. It's in there. That was the toughest lip I've ever had to deal with, but now it is really in there. I'll buff out all of those marks and stuff I made from hammering on it. Get some baking soda in there and get your glue on there. Where did I leave off? Oh, uh, yeah, that's all smooth. Uh, the lips and the... Why am I so confused right now? Okay, I'm just gonna cover this in super glue. It's time to seal the wood. Of course, my super glue bottle is plugged. That is the one thing about this brand of super glue. These bottles get plugged so easily. Anywho, sealing the wood with super glue, covering what we just made in super glue. You rarely do that when you make things. It's a weird feeling covering what you make in super glue. You think of super glue as such a touchy, you know, instantly adhere things together, get all over your fingers, make mistakes with it that are kind of detrimental. But when you make a bait like I do, you just cover, cover your stuff in it. Fling it around a little bit, get the excess off. You don't have to care where it goes. Just try not to get it on you. Need my accelerator. I hold it with a big screw like this in the tail slot. It's, it's really convenient that way. Then I can just hold this piece by the lip. My friend's a machinist and uh, he gave me this crank. I think this is crank grinding belts, 400 grit. J-Flex P400. Gets stuff really smooth. Like this is a good belt. I use it with my hand. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. He might have taken this from his work without asking. Sorry, Nick. I need to drill some eye sockets now. Just like that, we are on to painting. Starting with white. 
With baits like these where I'm not entirely certain if the action is going to be good or not, I'm super reluctant to paint something super fancy on them. I kind of, I do that for the video, you know, but I'll try to get something simple but appropriate. Like I want this to be an injured fish, so I'll try to paint like an injury. I don't know, I'll do something. I'll do something. <laughs> These are always a quick but good looking solution, I guess. I'm gonna use this for this bait. It's a gold one, like a scraggly gold scale that is, you know, translucent. Where the white is, it's translucent, so I'll be able to put some color behind it. I'm gonna put that color on right now. I think starting with an orange belly. Yeah, orange belly. So the other colors that I shot were a purple on the top, and then I went over the whole thing with a yellow, and then I did a gray sort of blotchy thing in the middle. The darker gray right there is for the, the scale pattern, the foil stuff. It shows up better with a darker color, so I added it. Now I gotta cut some of that out around a lip and a hook hanger. This will be tricky. The side without all the stuff on it's easy. I just traced it. I'm gonna cut it out, put it on. Touchy, touchy. Oh man. Better be in the right spot because I'm laying it down. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. What makes this pretty manageable though is that both sides are symmetrical. So I just need to orient, you know, the scales the correct direction. Pretty sure I have it right there. And it doesn't matter which side I trace. They're both the same. What does matter, I'm gonna have to cut a little piece out right there so this hook hanger can get through and then I'm gonna have to cut the whole thing just a straight line across right here. Mark that on both sides and apply two pieces. So yeah, really not that complicated. I might have over exaggerated. It happens. I'm putting a little dab of black right there. I'm gonna line this up and that's where I need a hole to be. I think I'm gonna drill one. Probably the quickest way to get this done. Yeah, and that'll just slide over. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And just throw the other one on the head here. That is pretty gorgeous. And it all worked out perfectly. Not bad. In order to make this fish look injured, I think I'm just gonna put a big gash in it, just like that. I made this stencil for it. Just on the front piece, a big gash going down the side. I'm gonna start this with white. That way it's nice and bright. That will be good. I just sprayed that and I didn't record it. Whoopsie doopsie. But it looks pretty good. I came in heavy in some spots and light in others. And now I'm gonna come back with some detail smoke black, I think, and give it some depth towards the top. Make it actually look like it's a cut. I'll show you this side. We're already recording, so I won't forget. That looks good. I think I'm gonna go around all the edges with the black. That might look best. Yeah, that looks all right. This bait fish has been injured. Last step in making this bait pretty is giving it an eyeball. My last two eyes and they don't match. That's what will be going on this bait. I need to order more. That is a good looking bait though, don't you think? Clear coat. Doing the tailpiece first. I'm gonna make sure not to get clear coat inside of that lip slot. So I'm brushing it on. And then this one's tricky. I'm close to just getting, dipping this whole thing, even the lip. No, I won't do that. I'm gonna hold it by the hook hanger and dip it this way and try to stay clear of the lip. That side's good and that side's good. That worked out pretty good. Jeez, that is a pretty bait. It's turned out better than I thought it would. A Little bit more dripping and I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do next. Never done this before. I'm gonna rotate this just like this for a little while and then I'm gonna take it over to that tank, turn the lights on and rotate it in there for a little bit and get this thing to cure with a really thick clear coat on it like this. I, I'm. It's kind of unnecessary, I don't really need to do this. I just want to see if I can with this bait, trying to make sure that the clear coat's even. It's not globby. It's ready. It's looking good. It's, it's, it looks like that worked really well, actually. It has a very thick clear coat. That's cool. 
Clear coat is set and the bait looks amazing. I'm just gluing some hardware in now. Twist wires for the joint connection. All right, gluing that fin in now. Treble hook installed. This gorgeous bait is finished. The back section has the freedom to go every which way, which I think is good. Hopefully on the wobble down it does this. And then on the retrieve, we'll see what it does. I'm not, we'll just see what this does. But this is the finished bait. Goodness gracious, what a beautiful bait. Let's go, let's go fishing. We are here first, because I think I forgot my pliers here yesterday. And eh, never mind, they're not here. Dang it, those were Nipix too. Those are my favorite pliers. I don't know where they are. You guys have any idea how disappointing it is to lose a pair of Nipix pliers? Mildly devastated right now. The show must go on. I need a thumbnail. We're gonna fish here for a bit. Actually, I'm gonna see how this bait works right away. I'm just too gosh darn curious. slowly sinks and does not wobble. I mean, you can kind of get it to look injured and dying. It flippy floppies around a lot. That lip on the front causes it to not do anything consistently. So it's got a very erratic action. It's fishable. There's nothing wrong with it. It kind of does this. If you do a straight retrieve. Yeah. It does, it does the worm on a straight retrieve. Okay. We can get a fish with this. It's acceptable. Okay, the straight retrieve is pretty good. Like, that's a pretty interesting action. Here we are at a different pond. Much clearer water. I think with this finesse presentation, I need good visibility. It's a nice flashy bait, so they should be able to see it just fine. Just giving a different spot a go, as you do. Feeling good. Whoa, look at you. Just a little fella. Get out of here. Go. Get. There we go. Fish on. Retrieving it quickly. Seems to work best today. What is this? This is a better fish for sure. Oh, it's a big largemouth. That is a giant largemouth. Oh, good bass. Oh, very good bass. Do I have a scale with me? I do. Let's see what this one is. Stay still. 4.3. 4.3 pounds. Be free. Oh. Oh no. And all that excitement. I forgot to say it's official. Bass like injured bait fish. Now I have to catch another. Jeez. And my good camera ran out of batteries. We'll get another. I mean, we probably won't get another, but let's have faith. Finish this day out strong. Do you want a pond with large bass in it? Or have access to the largest selection of fish stocking species? 
in all sizes? Do you need a pond constructed? Do you need anything in your pond identified and controlled? Algae identification? You need it audited with electrofishing? Do you need extra habitation inside of your pond? More structure? You know, little crappie motels for them to hang around. Maybe like a, some rocks, rock bed somewhere for the other fish to be. I'm daydreaming about my pond someday. Sorry, I'm trying to do an advertisement. Seriously, pond, lake supplies, fish feed, fish feeders. It's pretty awesome what Kevin does. It's becoming a big thing on YouTube now too, managing ponds, pond growth. It is so hard for me to come up with the right words most of the time. You guys have no idea. Even docks. You need a dock built? You want an awesome dock? I do. I want a pond. I want my own pond. Anyway, contact Kevin. BJPond.com. Linked below. There are definitely bigger bass than that in that pond I need to catch this fall. There's 10 plus pound wiper in that pond. I don't know how big a largemouth get. I think over six pounds in that pond. Super nice pond. Always excited to fish that place. Contact Kevin. BJPond.com. Linked below. I already said that. We got one very solid fish, 4.3, or was it four pound, three ounce? I don't know what my scale is. I think it's ounce. Let's just say it's not ounce because then it's more if it's not, so. 4.3 pound bass. I had all sorts of ideas going through my head of what to do to this to make it work better. I was kind of thinking it didn't even need a lip. Maybe it would have been more fluttery without a lip because the lip was pulling the head down a little bit and kind of stabilizing it and, you know, not letting it flutter to its full potential. This is something I'm going to revisit. I'm pretty, I'm pretty into a bait like this. I like this kind of thing for fishing lures. Something that's a bit larger and it's got finesse potential. It's what I want. It's what I'm interested in for some reason. I couldn't tell you exactly why. I just, I like that. Oh, 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 oh you're pushing me back. Don't push me. It's not on to the next bait yet. It's not. Chip, stop making disgusting noises. I don't know, do you guys like the long beard? I don't really care. Bonus fishing! I went fishing, what was it, a couple, was it two days ago? We were gonna have a fish fry. You don't need to be that close to my face. And we were trying to only catch bluegill to have a fish fry with. This was Sunday. I did this Sunday, but before Nick got there with the cooler, I fished with a nine inch swim bait for a little while. This one, you know, this bait is nine inches long. That's the profile of it. I didn't catch one bluegill that whole day, but caught fish with this. I don't know. Bonus fishing, here you go. Oh, and uh, I didn't say onto the, I have to say onto the next bait right now. I know, I'm like, this video is very screwed up because I didn't say it's official when I should have and I didn't, I'm not gonna say on to the next bait when I, I need to now. On to the next bait. <laughs> That's what I got. You got one? Yeah, choppo. How's that work? I think it's worse than a plopper. Yeah, it's very choppy. This is an old swim bait I made. Okay. It was like, two years ago. This had a perfect tail kick though. Wow. Look at this bait. You fishing over here, I'll, go, I'll come over here with you. I'll show you, looks like I'll show you the action. Like, like the tail kick, oh! You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Nine inch swim bait. You have that camera on too. Yeah, not bad. It's official bass like nine inch swim baits that I made two years ago. We can't fish for bluegill yet because Nick's not here and the cooler's not here. We can't keep them, so we broke out the big baits, me and Cole. <laughs> wow. Anywho, I was going to show you the action of this bait. <laughs> I'd say it works pretty damn good. You're tangled up. Oh, shoot. It's quite good as that, but it still works pretty decent. Yeah, the tails on these were just. Look how far it moves. Like that it's a, perfect. it's this, it's not this. Mm -hmm. It's great. Ooh, 
Ooh. Ah, no. Okay, we all have to put nine inch swim baits on now. I wonder if you spent your whole life fishing here, if it would be possible to catch a bluegill with this. Maybe snag it. You know? Next video, I'm spending the rest of my life <laughs> here trying to catch a bluegill. <laughs> I did it backwards? Yeah, you should launch the boat with the back end. We'll get it. Um, the newer ones are like three or four hundred, but the older ones are pretty cheap. Why can't I get a bluegill today? Demonetized. <laughs> Sorry. I'm kidding. It's a good fish. Is that your biggest one from here? I think so. Look at the pretty colors on it. Look at that. That's a lot of blue on its gills. 